This lab is actually two labs combined. One is on thermal expansion and one's on Boyle's law. You'll start with the thermal expansion one. While it's heating up, I'll show you what I mean in a minute, you'll do the Boyle's law lab and then you'll go back to thermal expansion. So your objective here is to calculate the thermal expansion of a metal rod. So the goal of this lab is to find alpha, the coefficient of thermal expansion. To do this, you're going to measure the original length of a rod, you're going to heat it up to find the change in temperature, starts at room temperature, so T initial equals room temp, and then you're going to heat it up, and then you'll measure this change in length and solve for alpha, which you will compare to a known value from your book or the web or something like that. Let's take a moment and get a broad overview of our equipment. You've got this Bunsen burner here. It's going to heat up your water. By the way, don't touch fire. The steam is going to come down this tube into this pipe where it's going to heat up the interior of this pipe. Now you'll notice there are these little clips on the end. You'll see them better in the next shot. And those are actually what push against this little metal piece, which then changes this dial caliper. Now to get your final temperature, you will look up the resistance on this digital multimeter. And the way it does this is this multimeter is connected to a thermistor right on this rod, which is clipped under this foam piece. So it will tell you the resistance of the rod, which varies with temperature. And then you will interpolate using this chart right here. Now the first thing you're going to do is measure the length of this rod. And we are going to measure the distance from the outside of these two clips. Uh, you'll take this apart when you do this, and this would be your L knot. So take it out, and then when you put it back in, make sure that this clip slides on this end, and this clip is pushed up against this dial. Then you're going to push that dial three times, just so the dial gets zeroed. And then don't touch it after it's set. If you rotate the rod, it'll change this reading, which is bad. So don't touch the rod after it's going. Then you're going to plug it up to the steam. The next thing to notice is that there is a thermistor right here. That is a little clip that tells you the resistance of the rod, which changes as its temperature increases. And then you will read it from this meter and look up these resistance values on this table to get your change in temperature. Now let's take a closer look at this dial. Here's the clip that pushes up against this little metal piece which spins this number. So your millimeter measurement is right here, so this tells you millimeters, and each one of these little lines is 0 0.01 millimeters. So 40 hundredths or 0 0.40, 0 0.43. Right now this one's reading 0 0.46, I'm going to read it as 0.46 at 1 because we can interpolate this. So this would be 1.461 millimeters. The only time you're using your caliper measurements is when you're determining delta L. So this would be your L, I'm just going to write this as L initial. Don't add this to the original length. It has nothing to do with the original length. Then we're going to take the temperature. So here's a close-up of your digital multimeter. You're going to keep it on this 200K when the resistance gets a little lower as the temperature increases, you may need to move it down here to 20K. This tells you the max it can read. So this is the max reading. So you will look at this, and I will say 116.5. I will look at the two spots around 116.5 kiloohms. That's what that little K means. So 116.5 kiloohms. It's on the other side of this card, so I'd have to flip it over. But then when you heat it up, you look at what temperatures bracket this, and then you interpolate the temperature. There are instructions for this on your lab handout. It's a point slope form of line. So you're pretty much doing a linear. So pretty much what you're going to do when you're looking at the point slope form of line, we're going to say we have a position at R1, comma, T1, and then it's going to make a straight line to some point R2, that's a 2, comma, T2. 
and then you would just say, oh look, I can find the slope between these two bracketing points, my point is somewhere in the middle, and you could solve for the t you care about. Just a couple overviews, some notes to hit. Measure the initial length of the rod first. Don't do it when it's hot because you'll burn yourself and that's bad. Press the caliper a few times to make sure it's set. We went over this, otherwise it doesn't give you a consistent measurement. And then you're going to interpolate your temperatures. Now for the moment you've all been waiting for, data collection, where you get numbers, and you get to use formulas, and you get to see how the world works. Huzzah. So, okay, so just remember, your original length to the rod, if these are your clips, so your rod goes this way, you measure to the outside of the clips, right next to it. Your change in length comes from your caliper reading difference, and then your multimeter tells you the resistance and then you'll have to interpolate it. For your error analysis, error propagation like always, and then compare alpha to alpha from the book, from the internet. Um, probably don't just go ask random strangers unless they're reputable sources and not prone to just making up numbers. So while you're waiting, it takes some time for this water to heat up. So we're going to calculate the atmospheric pressure using Boyle's Law. So the theory is that pressure times some volume is a constant. Or if pressure goes up, the volume of the gas goes down. You apply more pressure on something, you squish it. That's pretty much Boyle's Law. For setting up this lab, you are going to take this tube. And this tube is not empty. We have filled it with air for your convenience. The farther you jam this tube in the water, the higher this goes. The little water inside the tube. Because you have more pressure pushing down. Remember, more pressure down, more you know, pressure increases as you go farther down in water, a fluid. It's equal to the weight of the fluid above you. So the farther this goes down, the higher the pressure goes. Now, you're just going to record this every 10 centimeters below the surface. So you'll record right here, and this is going to go between 10 and 80 centimeters. And then you'll record this number. So you can figure out how much air is inside this tube. And as it goes up, the water goes up, you can see that this air column in here decreases. Now when you are doing this, one partner is going to hold the tube right against the side. All right? It needs to be completely straight. Do not hold it like this because the water will do this crazy thing. This is a big no-no. Always make sure that it's straight. Your data collection. You need to record what's your initial volume of that small tube, the length of it entirely the depth of the bottom, this goes in 10 centimeter increments, how far the water pops up, and then you need the barometric pressure, and we'll get to why in a moment. So when you analyze this, Boyle's Law says that pressure and volume is a constant, right here. So if we move V over to this side, this would be the pressure from the fluid. However, that's not the only pressure. You also have your atmospheric pressure. So that's your atmospheric pressure that you read on the barometer, because not only is it underwater, it's also under the atmosphere. Right? So volume, we're going to approximate V equal to L, and the reason we can do this is if you have some cylinder, the width of the cylinder right here stays the same, the only thing you're changing is the height of the cylinder. So we're just going to approximate this V with L. And if you graph this, you'll get a line, and this offset right here. So if you graph y equals mx plus b, this offset right here, and it's actually going to be negative b, but that's okay. Same formula applies. Again, 
let's double check if you go y, no, look, pressure on the y, m is going to be this constant right here, x is 1 over l, put that right here, 1 over l, and then b is what you're looking for, that is your barometric pressure, because that's the offset. So what you're going to do, compare your thermal expansion coefficient with accepted values, and compare your barometric pressure with the barometric pressure from the graph. Uh, double check your error bounds, make sure it makes sense. Hope this helps, and I will see you in lab.